Shanda Rondo Boshanda Rabda Balebra Nemo Shande Lebra no no subaba e tando robdo bo kaeda. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Spirit of the Living God. Thank you, Spirit of the Living God. Thank you, mighty Father. Oh, we bless you, Lord. We honor you. We extol you, mighty God. We lift your name on high. the vision oh God we recast the vision we honor you we bless you we extol your name this morning you are worthy of praise hallelujah glory to Jesus amen and amen praise God thank you father for another beautiful day friends we want to welcome you this morning once again to another life session this morning we're going to be praying wherever you are i want to believe the lord that you know together we'll be able to press into the presence of god have a better understanding and a better clarity of his speakings for our day and of course be able to develop that spiritual you know re, you know resolution to maintain the path to maintain the course and to continue to walk if you will in the straight and the narrow path so that the intentions of god Amen. We'll not just be fulfilling our life in our homes and our family, but of course also in our nation, in our society, and in our community. Wherever you are this morning, I hope your heart is aligned to join us to pray because we want to pray this morning. We want to seek the heart of God, the mind of God. Just want to quickly start with the scripture in Isaiah 55. 8 to 9 very uh, 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 interesting and of course very relevant scripture that I mean this is a scripture personally that has been if you will a GPS for me for several years now and whenever I look at this scripture I see amen, the heart of God the mind of God and it makes me or right, not to presume or assume that I know what I'm doing because his thoughts are not my thoughts his ways are not my ways. Amen. Let's read, let's, let's read together so we know the direction of the Lord for our life, for you know this season and time. We live in a very crucial season. We live in a time where all kinds of things panning out and shaping the narratives of the days that we live in. And if we're not careful, if we're not towing the line, towing the, if you will, the, the narrow part of the spirit, we may just be, you know, derailed and be pulled, all right, you know, to some things that God has not ordained for us. You know, the context of our prayer this morning is in line with what we've been sharing for a while, talking about, amen, you know, finding the vision, recasting the vision, amen, redefining the vision. As you as you know, we, we've picked a scripture in Habakkuk, all right, chapter 2, where Habakkuk said, I will position myself, amen, upon the tower upon the ramp amen upon the you know a, a mountain top upon the you know a, a, the, the tower of the spirit to see and to hear what god will say to me yes god is a speaking god and if we're rightly positioned if we're rightly connected we will hear his voice we will know his mind and we will be rest assured hallelujah one of the things that you know has become an issue you know to to human life all right and and this issue okay is so prevalent that you know it has cost many people their life and is the issue of uncertainty uncertainty amen everybody wants to live within the reality of of certainty if there's no certainty in our life amen everything collapses 
no matter what you're doing if you're not sure of tomorrow if you're not sure amen that you know things are gonna be are gonna work out well if if you're not certain that what you're doing will, will is the right thing and you're on the right path you basically lose you know balance to life you lose direction you 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 lose momentum amen you lose inspiration you lose you understand motivation and a lot of people you know are in that state right now so we want to pray amen in the understanding of what the spirit of god is saying to us we have to have the ear and ears if there's anything in this season you need to invest into is how to remain within amen the environment of 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 the voice of god of the speakings of god because that is what gives us certainty what gives us certainty is not you know you know political you know promises is not you know economic you know uh, uh, you know uh, 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 ideas is is not even the money we we you know we we want or we need or we even think we have certainty amen is the most powerful thing within the realities of human existence and that certainty does not come by our own ability or will amen or desire it comes amen from above hallelujah so let's look at the scripture as we align ourselves in the place of prayer remember the prayer first before you verbalize amen your need prayer is first an attitude is a position is a posture amen is a is a value system amen yes that you have that understanding allow you to set your mind amen within the framework that god amen can interact with we want our life to become a place where heaven, amen, can speak into on a regular basis. Morning by morning, he awakens me. Hallelujah. Awakens my ears to listen like one that is being instructed. That is Isaiah 50 verse 4. But let's look at the scripture this morning quickly. And then we'll look at other things that the spirit of God will be leading us into as we pray. For my thoughts are not your thoughts so basically we begin to understand that god has amen a dimension within his existence called the thought realm and of course we know that thought comes from amen our mind so god is speaking to us about his mind here okay my thoughts leading to the psyche the psychology amen of the state of being my thoughts if your thought amen is captured by by challenges of life amen by situations people all right every other thing about your life will collapse because your thought is what gives balance to amen your existence you know, the, 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 you know the, they say as a man thinks in his heart so is he your spirituality is measured by the state of your mind the state of your thought let me repeat that again your spirituality is is measured hallelujah by the state of your thought and this is the reason why they say let this mind be in you the mind of the mind of christ amen is consistent of the thought of his father beautiful word god is speaking to us this morning because this inform us how to pr you cannot pray effectively if you are if you don't have the right state of mind if you don't have the right frame of mind amen we've taught we've thought on this amen we've been teaching on this for several years now but i just want to you know bring it back amen you know kind of recap these things again as we get ourselves you know ready you know we like to use a word here as we undress ourselves and redress ourselves for the journey ahead as we continue to set our mind to us what is ahead of us we need to remind ourselves that amen our thought is not god's thought our ways are not his ways let me read the scripture because i'm just paraphrasing isaiah chapter 55 from verse 8 to 9 for my thought are not your thought of course i'm sure you know the context amen neither are your ways my ways declares the lord declares the sovereign one verse verse 9 for as the heavens are higher now it's showing us the distance in case you think well this is just some stroll distance this is just a mile distance you have no idea i have no idea of what god wants to do amen in the coming season but if I align myself, if I position myself, if I surrender and submit myself, irregardless of how he had used me, because the danger is, well, I know God. <laughs> I know how he speaks. You know, the danger is to try to predict God. 
And that's what we do. Even in the prophetic, we, we, we believe that we know so much of God that we can predict him. No, we cannot. Look at how he introduced himself. Himself here, yeah, very important. The way God introduced himself tells us something that he wants us to get. My thoughts are not your thought, neither are your ways my, you know, neither I your ways my ways declares the, the Lord. That word Lord there speaks of Amen. His sovereignty. So he's not just telling you that well, I'm God. No, no, he's telling you that I'm God over all things. Including how you think, how you reason, how you believe, how you see. So while we have our doctrine right, while we have our theology right, while we have our sense of spirituality right, while we have our sense of dominion, God is still God. He is still the Lord. Meaning that he can do and undo. <laughs> I mean, where was Job? Job was busy doing his own thing. He was a righteous man praying, you know, for his children, doing everything the scripture, you know, you know, ask him to do. He was doing everything, hallelujah, in accordance to the scripts. He didn't know something was happening, amen, <laughs> on his behalf. He didn't know the discussion that was going, going on in the heavens on his behalf. Suddenly God start boasting about you know about Jacob. Why am I saying these things? In case you have an idea, amen, of how 2024 is gonna pan out or how your life tomorrow is gonna pan out, I'm telling you, you don't. The only way you know, amen, is to align yourself to his thoughts, to his ways. To his speakings because in in god's sovereign thought he may decide to move you from wherever you are and shift you to another place amen and take people from that place and put them in your place you understand yes he may he may decide to disrupt your life that's the word we use god is very good in disrupting our lives <laughs> particularly if, when we think we know him he just creates all kinds of things and move you like a chest here 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 after all we're all chests in his hand He's playing us, hallelujah, as a game, amen, yes. He knows what we need to do, where we need to be. But you see, if we have a thought that religion has infused in our mind, that traditions have infused in our mind, that our own culture, in fact, yesterday I was writing something very important that hopefully I'll be able to teach, you know, uh, uh, maybe before the end of the year, all right? Talking about ministry, all right? Uh, talking about uh, 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 you know perceptions and then of course you know uh, blind spots and representation i love i just love the way god is speaking we all even in our sense of you know knowing god we have blind spots and this blind spot amen are even more reinforced based on the environment that have shaped amen our condition of reasoning and even our understanding of spirituality and all of this impact the way we represent god even in regards to how we pray you can only pray to the understanding of what you believe and think amen is your need or the need of society you can be looking at society and be saying well society need this particular need and you're praying along that along that line and that may be good but in the perfect will of god your prayer is amiss what we should be doing and be praying, amen, is to know the mind of God, amen, for every situation, for every occasion, aligning with that, amen, understanding, and then praying that into, amen, existence. That is praying the will of God. You cannot pray if you're not in the will of God, and you cannot be in the will of God if you don't have the mind of Christ. Hallelujah. That's why they tell us, amen, let this mind be in you. Your mind should be renewed on a regular day-to-day -day basis, morning by morning. He awakens awakens me awakens my ears to listen like one that is being instructed teach us how to pray as john taught his disciple friends the days ahead of us are uncharted territory they are uncharted path and we're going to be needing the heart the mind of christ the leader the leadership of the holy spirit to lead us that's why we've got to have, amen, a renewed mind. We've got to have a mind, hallelujah, that is infused into let your will be done. Let your kingdom come. Let your desire find inroad and expression in my life. Not what I think, not what I believe. Yes, believe, thinking are important, but I align them, Lord, this morning to your desire, to your intention. Yes, I, I want my life to reflect your counsel. 
I want my life to become the very effulgence of your desire. I want my life to be a light in the midst of darkness. And darkness are in degree. So increase this light in me. Increase your light in me. Yes, Lord. Increase, oh God, your presence in my life. So that when I go out there, men can see your light in me. I want to be that city set on the hill. on the Yes, on, 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 on the mountain. I, I don't want to be hidden. But while you are hiding me now, continue to process me. Continue to deal with me. I don't want flaws in my life. The word is no wrinkle, no blemish, no spot. Or no spot, no wrinkle, no blemish, whichever way. He's coming for a glorious church. He's coming for a glorious church. He wants to reign through a glorious people. So, Lord, this morning, I'm positioning myself. I'm laying down my life like Isaac. I'm submitting to the obedience, yes, of your voice. I'm submitting to the obedience of your fatherhood in my life. Yes, Lord. I have brought the wood, the wood yes, Lord. And, 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 and the wood has been laid on the altar. The altar has been built. I'm laying on it this morning. I'm saying, let your kingdom come. Listen, friends. Whatever we do in the name of spirituality, if it's got a selfish agenda, that thing is no longer accepted in the, in the, in the hand of the Lord, in the sight of the Lord. Whatever we do, amen, with an agenda that wants to project us, with an agenda, yes, to put us in some pedestal, to be known, to be seen, to be recognized, God is no longer involved. Because God wants to take the glory even in the fulfillment of our vision. What we call vision. Remember the vision belongs to God. We are just custodians. Hallelujah. We are just stewards of these things. No matter what your vision hallelujah, is, being, is, being, is being birthing or producing in society. No matter what you are doing. You've got to be able to see that that thing. Hallelujah, it's not by your own might. It's not by your own power that you are able to will those things. And that's the mistake. You know, we are in the end of this and we have to speak, amen, within this context so that we don't fall into the trap of even our achievement. We don't fall into the trap of see what the Lord has done through my hand. Yes, the Lord has done it, but through my hand. And we so amplify the through my hand that everybody now begins to what? Focus on us. That's a danger. I don't want to be. I don't want to be in that spot, and I don't want you to be. I mean, at that spot, we want to move away from anything that will, you know, showcase us. Jesus said, "If I be lifted up, you know, one thing about vision is when that vision begins to speak, it has a way, amen, of making you known. That vision. I mean, God will use people. I mean, you you cannot see Jesus and not recognize the donkey." You understand when Jesus was riding into you know Jerusalem, he rode on a mule on a donkey. All right, yes, you carried Christ, and the donkey may begin to think, Well, I, you know, yeah, yeah, it's about me. I, you know, I'm the one who carried Jesus. You're not dead yet. Uh, this prayer is calling us to caution, it's calling us to alignment, it's calling us to amen to understand the sacredness of the day not my word it's calling us to the sacredness of the day it's calling us to be very cautious it's calling us amen to be very 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 careful there's so many things that the lord is dealing with in this season where we are really seeking to want to do something for god to want to please god to want to honor god and yes we need to do that but we also need to continually hallelujah, allow him to, to probe our motive, hallelujah, to probe our desire, to probe our reason. Yes. And we saw during the teachings we were doing about the transitions of, of Elijah of Elisha to take the position of leadership. As God was about to take, you know, Elijah out of the scene, one of the things that you know we that, that stood out that was so prominent in that teaching was the probing, was the exposing of the motive, amen, of of you know of of Elisha, that all those process of journey that began from Gilgal to the place, amen, of crossing Jordan was to deal with the condition of his heart remember elijah had already served elijah for 30 excuse me for 22 years 
and you would have thought because of that that was good enough for God just to give him the battle and say Elisha it's your turn now no 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 they still took him from Gilgal hallelujah yes the place of circumcision they brought him to the place of circumcision what am I saying because of the nature of the days ahead of us God amen is really refining this house this life God wants us to indeed produce for him amen uh, you know the best of the best one they say you've you've kept the best for last if we are gonna be amen the best of our generation then it has to be by the quality and the condition hallelujah the uncompromising condition of our life and lifestyle before the Father. Hallelujah. It cannot be anything less. Whatever we have seen, we have heard, amen, we've experienced and we've, 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 we've noticed in the life of people behind us, in people, hallelujah, that we can look at their life from the past. <laughs> we have to exceed that. I mean, you look, 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 look around the body of Christ. What am I doing? I'm basically challenging us. We're praying. Yes, we're going to pray. We're going to, but, but we're, we're praying. I hope you understand that we're praying because prayer is to know the mind of God. Amen. And to feel that impulse and to feel that impulse and connect to that pulsating that our heart, amen, begins to yearn and say, Lord, I don't want to make the mistake of that man. I don't want to make the mistake of that woman. I don't want to end up, amen, the way that ministry end up. I want my life to be Amen. A reflection of a new day. I want my life to be that new wine skin that you can pour your prophetic design intention for this glorious day into. I want to be a carrier of the very essence of your life. I want to be a carrier. I want to truly represent you. So I want to know your thoughts. I want your thoughts to be my thoughts. I want your ways, amen, to be my way. I want your light to be my light. I don't want to carry any other light. <laughs> the same prophet Isaiah, God was speaking through him. He said, go tell the people, you who light your own light, then walk, walk in, the, in your own light. Walk in the, in the power, in the energy of your light. If you want to light your light, you go walk in that light. Oh, there's so many lights people are lighting today and they're walking in it. And if you're not careful... <laughs> You would have been applauding them. Hallelujah. Wow. What a, what, what a ministry. What a man. No, 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 no. It's a false light. Because a light does, that does not mirror Jesus. When you, when, you, when, you, when you turn on that light. When you turn on that touch. Amen. And, 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 you, and you, you begin to cast the light on the, on the wall. What you're going to be seeing is the image of a man. God is calling us away from that. John told us how to do ministry, how to live life in this end of days. He said we must decrease. Hallelujah. Are we actually doing things to decrease? No, no, no. No, we're doing things to promote ourselves, to increase. In fact, in the church, they will tell you, we've got to increase. No, Christ must increase. You must decrease. I must decrease. That's the call, friends. That's the message. If you're not ready for this, you're not ready for ministry. You're not ready for the things of God. Your prayer is in vain. Because you're not seeking the kingdom. By the time you finish seeking the kingdom of God and his righteousness, every other, everything that defines Isaiah Phillips Akintala is dead. Hung on the cross. Ministry is not to give you a platform. To grandstand, to reveal, amen. Yes, your strength, your ability, whatever that ministry is, it could be a business, it could be a career, whatever you do, you, you know, you define as ministry. It's for the glory of God. So understanding vision, hallelujah, must be in, al in alignment with amen, the protocols of the Father, the ways of the Father, the desires of the Father, amen, the strategy of the Father. Yes, Jesus said, I come in the volume of the book to do one thing, your will, O oh God. What is written of me, what has been written of me is what I've come to what to fulfill. I have become, yes, the word manifest in flesh. 
people will look at you they must see yes the desire of god the design of god the intentions of god they must see we are the living epistle known and read of all men i was thinking about that this morning just while i was you know in fact not when when i got up you know i was just you know brushing my teeth and then i was thinking about some things and this word came to my spirit the influence of men and some image that coming you know in, into my mind there's a particular man that i know very very popular in nigeria back in the days very popular highly popular i don't want to mention his name but god raised this man i believe highly influential you know did so mighty things for god and you know because of that man you see your influence in an environment in fact the very definition of influence means you are able earlier to bring people you are able to attract people that's the definition of influence that you can attract people that you can pull people amen towards a particular narrative or towards a particular belief or value system and that's the that's the danger of ministry god help me and i'm thinking of this man and i thought of the things this man have done and also i began to think of how he has influenced people amen in the area of ministry and how you know people have come to see ministry from one particular point of view of course from his own definition because it's, if you will in in material thing he was successful everybody look up to this man well let me not say everybody most people look up to him they want to be like him their narrative of ministry their definition of ministry even the way they look at you know life society you know material things was pattern after this man i mean i was scared i said god help us the danger of a wrong influence if you're a person of influence in your community people will generally listen to you don't they they will follow you that's what politicians do they use the power of influence all right to bring people you know to follow them and god help you if that man is basically just pretending and people are passionately following yeah 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 they're following the man you would have led them into a place of destruction because influence is very contagious did you hear what i said influence is very contagious even if you don't want to be influenced when you begin to see things you begin to and if that man is doing things that people need in the community it's not it's so natural for you to begin to think again and say Maybe after all, this man is maybe he's, maybe he's, maybe he's our Messiah. Maybe he's our Lord. How do you think the world is going to be deceived by the Antichrist? Because the person, of course, will be a person of influence and will be doing things that people want, that people need. He'll be solving people's problem. But in fact, he is the Antichrist. So how how do we judge these things, friends? We're praying, and these are the things that inform how we must pray, so that we are not we're, we're not living a life, amen, that is captured by deception, and we don't fall into a blind spot. Because bl once we, <laughs> Jesus, help me, help me, Lord, help me, Lord. And I thought of how this man has raised. A generation of false leaders this man did I, I believe it didn't you know start in life to be false I believe it was not his desire all right to be false but he wanted to do something and when God began to you know bless him you understand he began to deviate he began to deviate from the path he began to deviate from the from the heartbeat of God amen it's like you wake up in the morning all right, all right no no I, I will pray I will pray later there are certain things that you need to do constantly even when you come to the place where you think amen yes uh, it's defined as arrival all right you know you know we're praying you know that's the religious mindset I'm praying for God to do it for me God you must do it for me and there's so much invested emotion God do it for me and I've been there too yes Lord I need a breakthrough I need you to touch my life I need you to walk in my life and after a while God did it for you so after God has done it for you what next well God has done it for you what next sit down eat rejoice 
you know do whatever you want to do that cannot be life but unfortunately that is the mindset many of us have so when we get to that point of saturation of satisfaction there's nothing else motivating us remember the contest is about vision there's nothing else motivating us so we live within amen the ambience of our achievement and the enemy then i judge the very achievement god has given to us amen to begin to build something earlier for himself by amen focusing on us you are the focus you are the focus you are the champion you have arrived and yes you begin to, we love that yes yes i'm the champion and then satan begin to use that you know wrong mindset that wrong belief system that all right we have acquired through our achievement to build a kingdom for himself and of course that he used to what to influence people into his kingdom i'm not sure if i'm making sense to you friends that's why you have to regularly check your heart. Let him that thinks is stand. We can think we, we are standing. We can think that we have arrived. We can think that yes, this is the place we need to do X, Y, Z. I, let him who thinks is a state of my mind. My thoughts are not your thought. Let him who think is stand. You're not just thinking, but there are things proving that, in fact, you're standing. But you don't know that you're actually standing on a sinking sand. So, there, there are prayer lifestyles, there are belief lifestyles, there are value lifestyles that we have to constantly cultivate, constantly, regularly. You have to become, you know, you, you have to be taking those things in constantly constantly amen those things maintain you on what is called the straight and the narrow path the straight and the narrow path that will allow you to enter amen? the eyes the gate of the eyes of a needle all right that you don't grow fat on the things of the spirit that even while god blesses you and god increases you you remain hallelujah in that state amen of of you know of of, of a lifestyle amen that that is not bothered down that is not buckled down amen by the weight of your achievement you continue to travel light you continue amen to maintain that one vision and there's a man that comes to mind when we talk about this his name is caleb 40 years ago he was promised amen a mountain 40 years later 80 years amen he said my vision has not grown dim my desire has not died amen my motivation for this promise of god earlier has not been captured i am still strong you know you know you know are, are, are powerful enough to have this promise give me this mountain he says 40 years later what what a maintenance of vision 40 years i mean 40 years is enough to bury you 40 years is enough amen to you know to take your vision to take your sight 40 years is enough amen to make you lose amen the real the real sense of life 40 years is enough amen to prosper you to the point that you forget amen the one thing you live for 40 years is enough to say well i don't think god is involved god god really wants me to have this thing 40 years i've been waiting for this thing as he goes through life there was nothing that could stop or hinder him or limit him or tell him well you see now you're 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 an age man you 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 can't you don't have what it takes you see messages like this is what keeps us on the straight and the narrow path whatever is gonna come my way in 2024 i don't know but one thing i know god remains faithful and as long as he remains faithful i will remain faithful to him as long as he is alive, amen, nothing will take my vision, nothing will plug my eyes away from my calling, nothing, no Jupiter, no devil, no man, no woman, amen, no society, no government will be able to take me out of this path. Every day I remind myself of who I am, no, everyone can drink the wine, not me, I'm not going to touch that wine, because you're going to lose your mind. You see, this is how we live. This is how we continue to maintain our path. 
that if he tarries, hallelujah, in 2030, we will still, amen, be doing what God has called us to do. It may not be on the context of this point, but wherever we are, hallelujah, we will still be journeying. We are of them, hallelujah, who have come out of the land of bondage and who are entering into the rest of Christ. You see, spiritual resolution is different from verbal resolution. A lot of people by December, they will be making some resolution. What they're not going to do, what they're going to do, blah, blah, blah. What they're going to change, what they're not going to change. Of course, you know that by January, February, they're back to their old. You see, these people are not, are not con convinced and convicted yet. See, conviction is not something you do by the power of a will. You have to collide with God. You see, it is vision that changes people. All right. If you want to change, but you have nothing to occupy the place that have been changed and transformed, it's just only a matter of you know a matter of time before, amen. Yes, what you thought you've been changed from, amen, resurfaces again. Because life is not just about being clean. Life is not just about being righteous. Life is not just about all right, being pure. No, it's about being zealous for the things of God. What keeps us righteous, holy, amen. What keeps us on the path of truth. What keeps us, amen, moving is because we have seen something for the joy that was set before him. If nothing is said before you and all your understanding of Christianity is, I don't want to smoke again. I don't want to lie again. I don't want to, you know, be about uh, you know, wrong people again. No, no. You've got to change, amen, one addiction for another. You've got to change one addiction earlier. You used to be addicted to yourself. Now it's time to be addicted to Christ. Amen. You used to be addicted to things. Now it's time to be addicted to the kingdom. Hallelujah. You used to be moved by the opinions amen, of man. Now you must be amen, moved by the opinions of Christ and Christ alone. Hallelujah. We don't change for changing sake. We change for kingdom's sake. See, that is what keeps you going. That's what keeps you. That in the next hundred years, what do you think kept amen, Noah from the madness of his day? Not because Noah was just a righteous man, but because amen, he was armed with a heavenly vision to be fulfilled in time. He was building his energy. You see, energy are designed to be occupied. Like I always said, there was there's nothing that God created, amen, in vacuum. Whatever you have or you know you intend to go into that creates a vacuum, it's a trouble. That is just a waiting problem. You know, you know why a lot of relationships, particularly marriages, don't work? Because people think the marriage is about them. No, my husband doesn't love me again. My wife doesn't love me again. There's nothing like that. The marriage was designed to fulfill. To fulfill. If you're going to fulfill, means you must be pouring into. To fulfill. Once there is no fulfillment in the intention of God, amen, for that relationship, that thing starts dying. Because then there's a vacuum. The love is designed, amen, to motivate to us a place. I'm just giving us an example. Or maybe you're walking, all right, but you no longer get fulfillment in your walk. In other words, you're not feeling something in that walk. You're not, you're just occupying space, but you're not fooling that thing. You're not feeling that thing with God's intention. You're going to get bothered down. You're going to get tired. You're going to get boggled down. You're going to get depressed, amen. Yes, you think, well, I need a, another job. <laughs> Are you getting what I'm saying? Life was designed to be occupied. That's why in the in, in the in Genesis 1, when darkness was upon the face of the of the deep, the very first thing God did, hallelujah, was to reveal, was to occupy the vast land, the vast space. And God said, Let there be light. He filled the earth with light. Then he began to, amen, from that condition of light. Then he began to fill, amen, the earth, amen. Yes, with all kinds of things. He created the animal. He created, you know, vegetation. Everything, amen, was filled 
with heaven's divine intention you don't want to live your life maybe i'm speaking to somebody here you don't want to live your life not knowing where you've been called to feel not knowing what you're being called amen to feel not knowing who you are being called amen to feel full to feel it's a waste to live life with people that cannot feel you it's a waste to live life with people that don't even know that they need to be filled with something that is heavenly that is what we are talking about when they say pray your kingdom come your will be done on earth when the kingdom of god comes amen it feels that the knowledge of the glory of god may well feel cover the earth as the water covers the sea that's the word oh i love this thank you father is somebody listening this morning are we getting the flow of the spirit if you are waiting for somebody to fill you without you understanding amen that the reality of the kingdom is what fills us you will never get satisfied you will never get satisfied you will feel intimidated you will feel rejected you will feel depressed you will think well it's because i'm not beautiful enough it's because i don't have this enough it's because i don't have that enough no 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 you have not found the reason the essence the purpose of god's kingdom in your life that allow you to feel and that starts with filling your mind what do you fill your mind with what are you filling your mind with your thoughts let this mind be in you the mind of Jesus, amen, it's not just some empty, you know, vessel noise. No, that you have empty vessel making noise. No, the mind of Christ is filled with the knowledge of the will of his father. God, I love this. So everything that he did, amen, he did them in the context, amen, of one purpose, one reason. To honor, the, to honor his father, to glorify his father. Every miracle, every healing every deliverance every restoration everything he did was to bring glory to God his satisfaction was not just in an act his satisfaction earlier is in who gets the glory I hope this makes sense to you Lord we thank you your ways indeed are not our ways your thoughts are not our thoughts thank you father that this morning we are understanding how to recast the vision the vision is two things how to see and what to do with what we have seen hallelujah so we thank you this morning that as you adjust our sight we are able to see rightly we are able to see correctly but that's not good enough what we see now demands and push us tells us how to function your sight your perception defines how you function we were tracking the scripture you know on tiktok a few days ago which of course has reached you know uh, uh, 11 uh, uh, thousand viewers just talking about isaiah you know where the scripture says behold i'm doing a new thing and i was saying to the people that many of us want newness Many people will be wanting something new. Maybe for 2024, you want a man promotion. Amen. Yes. You want to, you know, move into maybe another field. You want something new. Nobody wants to live with the old. Nobody wants, to, particularly if the old has become so, you know, you know, sterile, become so, you know, old and a cake. You don't want, you want to get rid of it. You want something new. Everybody wants something new. You know how we jump, how we get excited when something new, amen, is given to us or when we're able to buy something new. Imagine some people want a new car, all sorts of things. When some people want a new house, we want new but how many of us truly are ready and prepared for something new if you want amen you know got to add to your home maybe a baby you've got to be ready amen your, your mindset everything about your life has to begin to change amen in terms of amen the addition God is gonna be bringing into your home you can't say we want a baby and uh, there's no room prepared for the baby amen there's no baby caught amen there, there's no you know buying of baby food diapers and all of those things that the baby will need but we want a baby and we are excited no you prepare for the new You want a new job. You want a new promotion. Oh, no, no. These people, they're they, they so racist. They're so racist here. 
Did how many years I've been working here? They don't want to promote me. All right, you want promotion? Excuse me. What course are you taking? What are you doing? How are you empowering yourself? How are you developing yourself? I once shared a post not too long ago on my Facebook timeline. There was a young man in America back in the days. Back in the days, he, he went to school, and of course, you know, back in the days they were racist. So in his class, they had to coin. A, you know a, a little you know corner for him he cannot mingle among you know his students if you check my post he's still there and I was you know I, I you know as I post this thing I'm 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 reading you know the the, the, the comments of the people and everybody's saying yes this is what they're still racist they're still doing this thing yes those things are real but you see those things were not issued to this guy he didn't say because they put him in the corner all right he's not going to study or he's going to in fact he came he became the third person the third best student in the entire school regardless of what people say to you what people do to you the condition they want to put you you understand that should not affect your own personal motivation of why you are in school that's the point that i'm making you may give me a little corner. You may never recognize me. There are people right now that as I'm preaching this thing, they have come and they've checked what I'm saying. It doesn't suit them. They've left. That's their own business. You understand? The opinions of men will not matter. You know, this kind of a message should go viral to the body of God. People should be like, hey, 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 come and hear what is going to change our life. You see, when you are moved, when you are bothered by what people say, what people do to you, you will never move into the place of fulfilling. Amen. You see, you see, when vision gets to the place when it begins to speak, that's the point. And I'm going to be teaching on that. When, you know, vision grows like a baby, vision grows. When your vision begins to grow like, a, you know, a, 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 like, a, like a mother, amen, who is carrying a baby, all right, and that baby start kicking, start kicking, start kicking. You know that that baby, all right, has grown. And any time from now, amen, the baby may be getting ready for delivery, all right, yes. So, so you, 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 when that baby start kicking, you know that certain things you don't do, you, you begin to adjust your way, you become more focused. And this guy, you understand, in his classroom was not really moved about, he said, he said he was in the classroom, it's like he's not even there. When he raised his hand to answer, they don't listen. Even his teacher don't really bother. They, they, it's like he's not, he's not in existence. But that doesn't mean, amen, that he didn't come there to learn. See, that's one of the things we've got to teach our children. That's one of the things I keep putting into the minds of my children. You've got to know why. You've got to tell them the power. Help them to understand what education is. I tell my children, education is your key. It gives you access into places. Education will, will, will take you out of, you know, limitation. And you want to go anywhere you want to go in the world. Education is your passport. People can live in certain narrative and be limited and be crying injustice, injustice. But what are you doing about it? What are you doing about that injustice? Oh, you're also carrying a placard. You know, freedom, freedom. No, we want freedom. It doesn't work that way. You've got to empower yourself. You've got to develop, amen, the vision, the capacity, amen, to continue to thrive in the midst of resistance and opposition. That is the power of vision. You see, what I'm, what I'm doing, I'm giving you a definition of how to pray. That woman said, avenge me of my adversary. When you have a vision, there are adversary. Every vision attracts adversary. My vision in South Africa has attracted so much adversary. We kick him out of the land. We destroy what he has built. Destroy his home. Destroy his marriage. Destroy everything that you can, you can destroy. Destroy it. Des destroy. Distract him. But I'm still here. See, I didn't send myself. I didn't send myself. And I can't go back to the one who sent me and say, well, sorry, because of the because of the heat, the heat is just too much. The day God tells me you've done your job in South Africa, then I've done my job. And I'll know. 
See, that's the that's the power of vision. Vision will tell you, amen. When you when you have when you have begun, vision will tell you, hallelujah, the process of the fulfillment of the vision, and vision will tell you when you need to leave the stage. You're done. Vision has a, a, a time limit because we all have a time limit to life. That's why I say we fulfill vision in time. It's a heavenly vision, but we fulfill it in time. You don't fulfill vision in heaven. You don't fulfill vision when you die. That's why you cannot play with your time. You cannot play with your life. And you cannot be messing with people who want to mess up with your life. Because to mess up with your life is to mess up with what you carry. It's a strategy. It's a war. No. I will die first before my vision dies. Listen to what I've said. I will never allow anything, not a Jupiter, not a man, not a woman, to tamper with what I carry. It's the essence of my existence. I'm nothing without vision. And that's why I'm steering you up this morning. It's not what brings money into your hand that defines you. If money is coming into your hands because there's something God wants you to do for him. That's where they are resourcing you. They say, why come back at the ground? <laughs> why are you occupying the ground? Let's cut it down. This thing is producing nothing. The good man of the house said, no, no, no. Let's not cut it down. Let's trim it. This tree is not producing. Let's trim it. Let's 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 walk the soil. Let's put in some, you know, some manure. Let's 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 give it a nice environment. Let's see. Give it another year. I'm excited all by myself. Give it another year. And if we have done everything that we need to do and this thing is not producing, then remove it. Because nobody is called to occupy, amen, a space that they are not empowered, amen, to bring forth, to bring forth fruit within that space. So, if God is blessing you, something is coming to your head, it's because there's a need, amen. Yes, there, there, there's something they want you earlier to do for God. Listen to this. I've always said this, and I'm sure you, 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 you will agree with me, amen. God only blesses his interest in our life. The reason why God has blessed certain people, all right, and it's, it's for the reason, for, you know, for me to be blessed. If the people blessing me financially are not blessed, how would they be able to bless me? How can I do the work of the ministry? How would I be running here and there, here and there? It's not like I've got enough. But the two, three people God has placed in my life to say, hey, let's support this man. You see, that gives me the boldness, gives me the courage, gives me the motivation to continue to do what I'm doing. You see, God resource certain people for hallelujah, them to resource his work so his work can continue. Everything about life runs in a cycle. It runs in a cycle. So in your seven years of abundance, you store. You don't eat it. Eat everything. You eat all the seed. No, 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 no. The next seven years of our life, we need to understand the heart of God, the mind of God. I don't know where you are in the season, in the circle of life. Are you in the season of abundance or are you in the season, amen, of, you know, storing? Because famine is coming. Because famine. And some people right now are in the season of famine. The Bible says a time is going to come. Amen. That there's going to be a famine of the word. There was a period in my life. Hallelujah. All I was doing, I was just taking it. 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 You understand? From 1990, 91, 92. All those prayers. To, to, to the year to, you know, 2000. I was taking it. Taking it. I wasn't going out to pray. But I was just. Mm, I was just. Mm, I was taking it. Suddenly 2000. The reformation. The apostolic break forth. Suddenly I began to bring out. Ooh, wow. Everyone's like, who is this guy? Where, where did everybody want a piece of me? But there was a period where I was taking it, I was taking it. That's the cycle of life. When you don't understand the season of your life, you don't know how to be better prepared. The season of abundance is not a time for just lavishing and just spending. That's foolishness. Now you have Isaiah to tell you all of this thing. I know what you're hearing. Don't take it for granted. 
Don't take this moment for granted. A period of time is not going to come. You may not have Isaiah to come and begin to say this thing and speak like this to you again. Yes, because God may, God may have moved him to another dimension or you will still have access to him. But it's not going to be like now where you are just hearing. This morning I said to myself, whoa, we've got so much resource. You know, on the internet that people can live can literally live their life on but some people are so now addicted and so used to you they must see you every day it doesn't work like that you see i'm very aware of all of these things don't take the things of god for granted don't take the seasons of your life for granted don't try to be smart when god says amen be quiet amen and be a fool let the lord lead you let the Lord guide you. Let the Lord tell you when to be out, when to be, amen, in a state of hidden. Let your life be a reflection of the direction and the directives of the Spirit. So that at every season of your life, you are making impact. Your life becomes a living epistle, known and read by people. There are people reading my life. I don't even know them. Like I've always said, you know, 90 people 90 percent of the people watching me right now following us they don't they don't know amen they've, they've never spoken to me they've don't communicate with me but my life has become a you know a soundboard to them my life has become an instruction to many of them even if i cry till tomorrow bless the work they will not they will just pretend as if they are not there but they are those whom God, amen, I stop. I'm just telling you the reality of your life. Because you see, if you don't know the reality of your life, you'll be living, amen, in, in some false expectation. If you don't know the reality of your life, you do, you'll be living in, amen, in a state of false expectation. You'll be expecting things from people that don't even exist. You, you'll, be, you'll, be, you'll, you'll be doing things that is getting you nowhere. Jesus knew the heart of man, so he did not commit himself. When they were in a day of the unfolding of the mysteries of God, and in this new day, we have to know how to live life so that, amen, we know how to connect, we know how to, amen, engage, we know how to interact, and we know how to represent, amen, our estate, we know how to defend what God, amen, has committed to our hands. We are, we are not playing the fool, we are wise. Because the days are evil. We are not sleeping. We are wise. We are like the wise men. Amen. We are like the wise virgins. We are not going to slumber. We believe God to be awake. That's why we must pray day by day. He awakens me. They were wise. Five were wise. Five were foolish. Even the wise one. The Bible says they went to sleep. Thank God. Hallelujah. That at the sound of the town crier. They were awoken. I used to tell back in the days I used to tell my people we are part of that company of them that cried we are part of them hallelujah that awakens we are not part of those sleeping yes I know there were five sleeping good I know there were five sleeping amen that the Bible called foolish all right but we we, we thank God for the ones you know that are awakened excuse me that are sleeping but they've got oil no no we are not part of that we are part of amen you see the, those one crying, those one crying. That's that the Bible says, and there was one who cried. I'm part of the one crying, hallelujah. I'm part of the one, amen, who rings the bell to wake up the church. So I'm ahead. And that's why the devil is looking for my head. You see, if you can destroy the one <laughs> that is at the watchtower that can see. That can wake people up. If you can get that one down, you can keep everybody sleeping. You see, that's why I, I, I don't fool. I, I don't. I don't fool myself. I know what I am. I know what God has called me to do. I hope you know what what God has called you to do. Want to be part of them, Amen? Who sound the, the you know the, the trumpet of awakening? Who, who who rings the bell the, you know of awakening yes wake up wake up you who sleep in zion awake the day of the lord is upon us this is how we recast the vision the vision resides somewhere the vision is not dangling in the air 
the vision is carried by people people who don't know amen that they are pregnant i hope you've met women like that they've been pregnant three months and they don't know they're just going <laughs> just do it the day they come into awareness ooh, suddenly okay i'm, I'm pregnant what i'm oh then it dawns on them yeah People who are not awakened to amen, yes, the reality of what they are crying, what they are carrying, anything pushes them around. For somebody like me, I'm awakened. I know what I'm carrying. I can't be foolish. I can't be, you know, drunk. I can't be doing what everybody's doing. No, I want to follow the guidance and the leading of the Spirit. I want to be where He is for my life. What are we doing this morning? We are recovering casting the vision in the atmosphere amen of a prayer lifestyle we want amen our prayer amen to be aligned with the mind of god we want to pray prayers amen that are informed by the spirit we want to pray prayers amen that are guided by the spirit we want to live our life on the cutting edge of god's kingdom amen advancement Want to live a life that honor God. Want to live a life that understand the mandate of the Spirit. Want to understand the context of the season we have been brought into so we know how to, amen, cast the vision. We know the kind of vessel the Lord, amen, wants this vision to be cast into. We know what the Spirit of God is demanding from us. Hallelujah. We are not just living our life at the detriment of God's prophetic desire. The vision is forever growing. And the way we track that growth is when we align with the mind of God, when we allow it, we align with the voice of God, when we continue to pray. Rababa, as you begin to pray, the vision begins to speak and give you direction, insight, leading. The vision begins to give you, hallelujah, yes, context to amen, what the Father will have you do. You are not, you are not, you, you, you are not captured, hallelujah. Yes, you are not, you are not acting out, amen, in the flesh. You are acting via the guidance and the leading of the Spirit. Hallelujah. Zande barabo. Every tongue, amen, yes, that you speak, amen, yes, speaks life into that which you carry and that which you're fulfilling. The Bible says he will praise in your known tongue. Speaks mystery. That's the language of vision. Vision is a mystery. It's not something a man gives to you. It's not what an organization gives you. Therefore, no, no organization, no church can sustain. Listen to this. No church organization can sustain an heavenly vision. We sustain an heavenly vision through a kingdom lifestyle through a kingdom culture so a church that has not entered into the reality of the kingdom is far from fulfilling God's vision our idea of church is far from the context of heavenly vision that's why Paul can say to Agrippa is a king I am not disobedient to the heavenly vision if it's heavenly, then the pattern, the principle, the economy, the administration, the government must be heavenly. My thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. What is the way of God? What are his thoughts? What are his mind? What is, his, this, this, what, what is the Lord's desire for, to, for today? What's the Spirit of God demanding of us? What is the direction? What is God steering in your heart? You see, the condition of our life, of our, spirit, of our spiritual life, shifts how we express this thing called vision. Like I said, let's not make the mistake of thinking vision from the same worldly mindset. No. No. If you do, you're going to end up, amen, with an ambition. You're going to end up with... With, with a humanistic thing 
You're going to end up, amen, yes, carrying things through your strength. And that thing has a way of killing you. Have you seen what people call ministry? How that has really killed so many. The ministry buried the people. No. The things of God must be run through. Amen. The life, the knowledge, the wisdom that comes from a place called rest in Christ. We rest in Christ to fulfill his intention. We rest in Christ to fulfill his desire. We rest in Christ to fulfill his mandate. We rest in Christ, amen, to build. We can build and be building in rest. When the, when the building is making so much demand on you that you are seeking to compromise, in fact, that you are using worldly ability and, 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 and strength to try to build the things of God, then it's time for you to stop and recast that vision. That's the purpose of recasting the vision. A time must come, you must stop and reappraise and reevaluate and ask yourself, are we still on track? Are we still building God's intention? Is this home still being run by the direction and the directions of the Spirit? Is this business that we are running still being, amen? Yes, run under the value, under the strict value of the Spirit. Is this ministry, this thing we call church, is this still being guided, amen, under the instructions of the Spirit? Is the Holy Spirit still, amen, the leader? Is this still the one leading us? Or have we allowed somebody to hijack the direction? Because the moment a man hijacks the things of God, the devil hijacks it from man. Like I said, when Adam lost his state in the garden, he lost his estate. That's the pattern. When Adam lost his state, and there's so many ways we can lose our state. To lose your state, Ailea, is to buy into the madness of the day, into the corruption, into the false value, the compromising systems of the day, is to go into humanism, is to try to use, you understand, worldly wisdom worldly you know knowledge to try to understand and interact with the things of god you cannot interface the flesh with the spirit the bible says the two are in opposite direction they hate each other the flesh is not your skin the flesh is the desire hallelujah of the fallen adamic nature we have to continue to preach this in friends or else the world is doomed or else the church itself is doomed if I don't do it somebody else will do it when I do this thing I'm at the mercy of God I wait on the Lord because you don't get popular with things like this you don't get popular saying things like this you don't get you don't get to go viral with saying things like this but this is what the world know. We shall know the truth. We shall know the truth. We've got to have, amen, a deep desire, a passionate desire. That what to know is not just to blepo. It's not just to have a gaze. It's not to have some knowledge. It's not just the acquisition of information. The word know means to have an intimate, in fact, to have an intercourse. To have a communion to have a fellowship to stay overnight until some somebody gets pregnant that is knowing knowing is one of the most powerful amen spiritual language adam knew his wife and they gave birth you don't know on surface Many of the things that I've been saying, the reason why some people don't change is because they don't engage with the desire to want to know. They want information. They want head knowledge. If somebody asks you, do you know Isaiah? Is that, oh, yes, I know Isaiah. I know, I know Isaiah. In fact, you can give a lot of description about Isaiah, but you really don't know me. 
because we don't spend time together. You don't know the burdens of my heart. You don't even know what Isaiah Philip is going through now. You don't know if I'm about to be pushed outside on the street. Am I living somewhere on the street? You don't know that. You don't know how I eat. You don't know if I eat. You don't, you know, you, to know is a deep thing. People shy away from knowing because knowing demands, knowing, amen, calls us, amen, yes, to a place of action. When you know, you take action. We think we know people. No, we don't. You can live with people for, for donkeys of years and never really get to know them. People are the best pretender. People can pretend for you, to you, amen. Yes, all their life. Have you discovered certain people? Have you married all their life? Until the man dies, then they realize that he's got children somewhere else. You're like, everybody's turning up and say, oh yeah, we're also, we're also the daughter of this man. Excuse me, who, who are you? Where do you come from? I know. I'm that, my mother. <laughs> Whoa. You plunge the woman into another state. All these years I've married you. And you have children outside and I don't know about it. Yes. You don't know me. Neither do I know you. That's what the Bible says. As for we know no man after the flesh. What am I saying? To carry vision is to know God. Nobody stumble on the things of God. To know vision is to know God because God is the one that impregnates you. Check. Check the Bible from beginning to the end. Everyone who came to something that they do for God is because God collide with them. <laughs> God collide with them. The first thing Saul said, "You, who are you, Lord? Who are you? You see, he wants to know who are you. We know religion, we know tradition, we know all kinds of things. That's why we, we, we run with those things. We believe more in our church tradition. We believe more, amen, in our, you know, identity, you know, as South Africans, Nigerians, you know, as Americans, because that's what we know. So when it comes to the things of God, mm -mm, we only have information. And that's why we cannot stand to defend what we claim we know. But what we know, we are passionate. We are ready to die for it. Isn't it? We're ready to die for it. You see, even tomorrow, listen to this, friends. Even if, let's say by tomorrow, everything go crazy in my life and I fall and I back, backslide, I cannot deny that I've been known of God. And I cannot deny, amen, that I know Him, that He's placed something in my heart called a vision. I cannot deny that. My world can be crumbling crumbling and everything is gone is in ground zero I still cannot deny what I know you see I've been impregnated I've been imp no matter where I go go to China go to you know Kuwait go to God knows where go to the far east go to the far ends of the world go to Iceland go wherever even if I decide today that I'm done with ministry I'm going back to my village not even to Lagos I'm going to my village somewhere I'm going to hide there that vision will continue to speak Kandalaba Yalaba and vision has a way of power Pulling things, attracting things, and pulling people, and taking you to where you ought to be. If you're carrying a vision that is day of speaking has come, even if you want to hide, you cannot hide. <laughs> David said, why can't I hide from you? <laughs> where? <laughs> if I go to the, to the bottom of the ocean and say you are there, it's talking about vision. If I decide or I, to fly away with the wings of a bird, he said, there you are there. Many of us, we think we know vision. We, we, are, we know vision. We know, no, no, no. We, we have an idea. Vision will alter your life. Because a vision will impregnate you. you know? Put a seed there. They put a spammer. Vision is a spammer. It's a spam. Everything of God starts with a seed. It grows. <laughs> you cannot hide. 
Vision will take you from the wrong place and realign you to the right place. Yeah. Vision will give you description and give you accurate description why they allow you in that situation that looks like he's going to kill you. Now you've done your, you've done your time, like they will say, you've done your time. Vision now will begin to take you and redirect your steps to the right path. Not every mistake in your life is a mistake. Sometimes what we call a mistake is a part of vision. There's a need that he goes through. Goes through. Vision will take you through paths you don't want to go. They say, hey, Peter, a day is going to come. We will lead you to go to a place you don't want to go. Who wants to go to a place of crisis? Who wants to go to a place of death? But except the corner of a seed falls to the ground and I is abides alone. What's the purpose of vision? To multiply the intentions of God. Multiply, increase, subdue the earth. That's the agenda of a vision. But a vision, amen, cannot produce itself. The vision must 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 be connected somewhere. Must be interfaced somewhere. Every vision must be impregnated, just like they impregnate you. You also must impregnate people. <laughs> That's why some of you, as crazy as I am, you can't leave me. You're that pro- crazy prophet. You can't go. Why? Because that vision that I carry, amen, is something God has preordained, amen, before time began. So that you, when you hear it, it steers something in your spirit. And I was thinking a few days ago about one of our dear sister. And I was thinking how this sister actually decided to start, you know, following me to the point she said, uh, you know, prophet back then, it's prophet, I want you to mentor me. And I was thinking, this lady never really understood what she got herself <laughs> into. You understand? She never really got to understand. And I'm thinking, I'm saying, I hope, I hope my life has really imparted her life to the degree that, you know, whatever she's doing now is bringing fruit and glory to God. Yeah. I'm telling you. Because when you collide with God, your life will be turned upside down. Oh, people don't like to hear that. They want everything just to be mellow and nice, just to maintain their sanity. No, 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 no. When you come into the reality of vision, you will look like you are losing your life. You are insane. Why? Because the world you used to know, the world you used to know, amen, yes, will be taken from you. That world will be no more. Behold, I do a new thing. It's springing forth. The vision will spring forth. And I don't take it easy on anyone that we're discipling. No. Because when I'm no more, I want them to live on the same cutting edge of the kingdom life, of the kingdom truth. That wherever they are, their life is speaking. They're not in shadow. They speak out people will point and say no 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 you don't want to mess with that one that one know what she, she knows what she's doing he knows what he's doing you see this is not just you know tell you what you want to hear so that I also can survive if you choose not to bless me again I'll still be doing what I'm doing there's a need that I go through my meat is to do the will of him who sent me by the time they came there is a I mean, they were all hungry. Hungry. They were all hungry. What's going on with this light? <laughs> they were all hungry. 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 They went to look for food. <laughs> by the time they came back, Jesus was already interacting with the woman by the well. What's going on here? Yeah, guys, you don't know. My meat is to do the will. He finds fulfillment. Joy. Hallelujah. He was literally hungry. But when God showed him a ministry, he'd rather go for that than to be waiting for bread. Many of us think that amen, ministry or vision, fulfilling vision, is about survival, bread. If it's about bread, I also by now would have packed, you know, my limousine, my, uh, you know, what's the latest uh, 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 Range Rover? You know, I, I love Range Rover. I just love the, the sky. I would have packed the latest one. Yeah, I, I would have been like, hallelujah, praise God. See what the Lord has done. 
You understand? It's not that we don't want those things. We don't love those things. I love those things. I want those things. But there is something big and greater driving me that is constraining me, telling me this is the straight and the narrow path. Even if you don't get blessed, you continue to do it. I know how to receive blessing. But if we don't get one, it doesn't stop what we do. You see, that's the difference. We continue to do what heaven has assigned us. That's the vision speaking. And the day is going to come. They say you, you will enter into a blessing that you didn't even know exist. Ah. You see, this is just me. This is this is one of the main message God has given to me to the body of Christ to talk about vision to talk about how people can come into the things of God to live a life within the cutting edge of God's counsel and plan for their life that your life amen it's not just about worldly achievement that you're living on the cutting edge of the reason why you are created so that even when death comes you're not afraid. It was Peter who said, I'm about, hallelujah, yes, to shed off this earthly, earthly, earthly clothes. The Lord has spoken to me that it's time to come into, to enter into the heavenly realm. I'm about to leave the earth. I want to encourage you guys to continue to live in the order of what is known as the present truth. I know I've taught you this thing, but let me remind you in case you have forgotten. That's what I'm doing. In case you have forgotten, let me remind you again your purpose that's what Peter said all of those people they knew when they were going to die Paul knew when he was to die they were not afraid because fear is a strange fear is, is, is a stranger to a person who is carrying vision you cannot be afraid and still want to carry the things of God no because fear is a spirit that has been dealt with in the place of understanding the vision Lord we honor your name we hear your voice loud and clear we receive a marching order we're proceeding further we're not moving back we're not shying back we're not turning back we are moving on our life is a voice to the nations our life is a voice to the nations the voice of one crying in the wilderness we're preparing your way we're making your path straight awake awake daughters of zion this is not the day to be looking for yes a man to marry so that you can bear their name this is the time to be married to christ we will join ourselves to christ so our life can be a reflection a manifestation of his true vessel in the earth while i was writing yesterday getting ready for a meeting I'm gonna, i've been invited to in, in johannesburg and the lord began to give me three this 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 three order it's the vision it's the vessel it's the service You've got to understand this tree structure it is the vision we have to understand the, the quality the kind of vessel that God needs and where and how to express the service of that vision and all of this we can begin to understand in the place of an uncompromised kingdom focused kingdom centered prayer life so father we ask you that in the day where people are being charmed by all kinds of lies and deception in the days where we look at things things to judge we see you Christ exalted we hear your voice and we ask you not to leave us the way we are. Not to leave us in our own presumption or our own assumption. Not to leave us, oh God, in the same quagmire where many have ended up. No, God, continue to engage us. Break us. Break, oh God, yes, that mold of the former things. Because you say you're going to do a new thing. 
break the mold of the old break it ah that's not a prayer many ones but we ask you break it because of the context of, a, of the day you are bringing us into oh father we ask you give us a new cast so that when you pour into this cast oh god our life can come out in the shape, in the image of how to maintain and advance, oh God, your prophetic, yes, intention for our generation. Lord, we say we are of them who is not shrinking back. Our hands are set. Our hands are on the plow. We want to till the ground for the seed of the kingdom harvest. We pray this morning that you will grant us once again a deep hunger, a cry, a passion. Just as we heard, they heard the cry of that town crier. The bridegroom is here. Oh, and they all woke up. And then five realized that, oh, oh wait a minute. While we're sleeping, the lamp has gone. The oil is, is dry. The wick has become weak give us some oil so we also can journey further you see the awakening is to follow the, the bridegroom the awakening is why would they have a lamb with the bridegroom alias come because they were to journey with him but alas the week is weak the lamb has no more oil so they said we need to go buy you see they had money they had resources but unfortunately on that day their money has become useless oh god help us god help us help us to hear your sound help us to know why now you've given us certain things help us to use those things to keep us alive to keep us on yes the straight and the narrow path to keep us to continue to journey through the eye of a needle help us not to boast in our strength not to boast in our resource they had money but they didn't have the time that's why I told us a few days ago don't let people waste your time and don't waste your time because listen there's something more valuable than money it's called time they had money, but they didn't have enough time. As they went to buy oil, the bride came and took the five wives. You see, you've got to hear the sound of the Spirit in this new day. Many of those things that people are clamoring and yearning and longing to have and, to, and they are boasting around. When the time comes to enter into the real reality of ministry, they, will, they would have become monuments. Just as we can see, many have become monuments. Big things, but they have no more power. They have no more voice. Big things men have built, but they cannot even convert the heart of men. They can't convert the heart of society. Big things people are talking about. Big doctrine, but they've lost fire. They've lost passion. Doctrine is good. I preach doctrine. But doctrine, hallelujah, must align with a burning, a burning. Ah, you got a double. He said, Let your lamp keep burning. Doctrine without fire, without passion, will lead you to the place where you start compromising and you start criticizing everything. You become so, so, so cold that even when God is moving around you, you won't see God moving. Because of the narrative that you wear. I'm a man of doctrine, but I'm also a man of fire. Remember, I told you guys years ago, the Lord said to me, Isa, there are two F's that I'm bringing into your life. You've got to choose one is fame or flame. You see, for all I care, I don't know. I don't know what people are preaching, and I really don't really care to a certain degree. The Lord said to me, the two F's. It is fame or the flame. And the Lord said, choose one. 
And I remember I said to the Lord, well, can I have the two? Can I have the, the flame and the fame at the same time? God said, sorry, no. You've got to choose one. Lord, you know what I'll choose? I choose the flame. God help me. Father, I'm still saying to you this morning that I choose the flame. I may not have what men are boasting of today. But I know these things are nothing before you. And in fact, they are nothing before me. But I stand before the nations, I stand before the viewers, and I declare again, I want, I desire, I long for the flame of your spirit. I want the fire. I want to be passionate, not in ignorance, but passionate about the reality, the revelation, the burdens of your heart. I want to be passionate for the nations. I want to be passionate for souls. I want to be passionate for the reconstruction, the transformation, the reformation of your church. I want the flame. The flame means the power to carry out. Not by might, not by power, but by my spirit. It's called the baptism of fire. So we honor you, Father, this morning. Take your place. Be glorified. Be exalted. Be exalted. The flame is what I need to go to wherever you send me. Not to shrink back. Not to look back. Not to turn back. Not to come the cost. Not to think of what to gain first. How much are they going to pay me? Yes. You know what I need. But Lord, I choose you. I choose your ways. May my brothers and sisters and fellow travelers, may we all choose this morning your ways so we recast the vision. Our vision is adjusted. Our sense of drive, yes, is realigned. We are motivated, endowed, empowered, induced by your spirit. Not going back, not looking back, not turning back to become a monument. But our eyes set on the plow. Our eyes set, yes, before the cross set before us. The joy set before us. Father, may we continue this day in, in your ways, in your will, until we enter into the place called Zion, the beauty of perfection. May we not rest, O oh God. Continue to renew our strength day by day, O oh God. I thank you. I honor you this morning that we will go in the power of this might that we will continue to eat and drink from this brook spirit of god you who have begun a good work in us you are able continue to lead us don't leave us to our own foolish ways it is the fool that says in their heart that the ways of god is not what they want we seek your ways we seek your desire take your place Help us to be rightly positioned so we can see from afar. Oh, we can see from afar. As you beckon on us, help us to see. As you call us, help us to hear. Help us to move higher. Help us, oh God, to develop the vision, the knowledge, the understanding of this new day. We recast the vision, oh God. We recast the vision, the heavenly vision, not the vision given by men. Not a given vision given, oh God, by organization, by society. Not a vision given, oh God, by just need. A vision you have ordained before time began. Vision is an eternal thing that must be fulfilled in time. Oh, we thank you that your intentions, your eternal intentions, your eternal counsel are finding expression in the earth. We bless you this morning that we will rise up, oh God. We will take our place upon the precipice of time and declare that this is the day of the Lord, the day of his intention. And we speak to the north, to the south, to the east, to the west. We say, give up, for it is the day of the Lord's harvest. We proclaim this morning that our, our eyes, O oh God, are upon the field, O oh God. We declare in the name of Jesus that once again, our minds, O oh God, are made up. 
not to run back but to continue to run to us we run to us we run to us we forget the things oh god that are be, be behind us we press to us the things that are before us we forget, oh God, the things that are behind us. And we press towards the things that are before us. Christ, you are before us. Christ, you are before us. And we take up our cross and we follow you. We love not our life even unto death. This day we declare in the name of Yahweh that we are the army of God. And we have come to see, yes, that the regency of Christ is established in the earth. For the kingdoms of this world, the kingdom of America, the kingdom of Europe, the kingdom of Asia, the kingdom, yes, Father, of of, of Africa, the kingdom of, of the Arab world, of the Asians, the kingdoms of God, of this world are becoming the kingdom of our God and of his Christ. Reign, Master Jesus, we proclaim and we decree and declare your lordship, your dominion. This is the day of your glory. This is the day of your honor. This is the day of your passion. This is the day of your desire. We declare, we proclaim, it's a new day. Arise, sons of a new day. Shine for the light of God out of Zion the perfection of beauty God is shining his light let the light of God yes right now begin to transform the sphere let the light of God begin to transform minds let people begin to align to the ways of God to the will of God to the desires of God to the intentions of God let there be a regiment let there be a formation of an army going for this morning yes to see to the fulfillment of the mandate of heaven this is the day of the Lord we prophesy we declare we declare we, in the name of Jesus, we build up as we tear down that which, yes, has become a cake, that which has become, in the name of Jesus, uh, foreign to the values of God. We bring them down. He said, For this day I've anointed you as a prophet to the nation to tear down, to cast down, yes, to plant, to build. We declare this is the day of the Lord. We take our place uh, as a company of Jeremiah, prophet sent to the nations. Uh, we declare right now that nothing shall shut our mouth. Uh, we will speak at the gate. Uh, we will repair. We will rebuild uh, the broken walls. Uh, we will repair. We will repair, rebuild uh, the bond gate uh, in the name of Jesus. Uh, we declare this day, elders are restored back to their place uh, at the gate. Uh, they will speak the heart of God, the mind of God in the name of Jesus. Uh, we are positioned at the window. We say no thief. Uh, we're sneaking. Uh, this is the day that we are awakened. Uh, we are awakened. They say when men were, when men were sleeping, uh, the enemy came here. We declare that we are no longer asleep. We are awake, awaken, awaken, uh, O daughter of Zion, put on strength. Uh, we declare this day, we rise up from the ashes of yesterday. It's a brand new day. We come to the pool, uh, hallelujah, of, of Salaam to be washed. Uh, our sight is recalibrated. We are of the generation of them coming out of, yes, River Jordan. We, we are baptized uh, into this new day, into the order of God, into the ways of the Spirit. We hear the voice of God coming down. We see the heavens open. Uh, we hear the voice of Yahweh, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. We declare we will please God. We will not be a man pleaser. We will please Yahweh. We will please him. We will please him from the north to the south, from the east to the west. Let there be, hallelujah, a rumbling. Let there be a beating of the drums of the gathering of the saints of God. This is the day of Yahweh. This is the day of his power. In the day of his power, his people shall be willing Thank you, Father, for a willing heart. Thank you, Father, for a willing mind. Thank you, Father, for a company of them, oh God, who are not giving up, who are not stopping, who are not giving up, who are not stopping. Lord, we are able to take the land. We are able, like Caleb, we are able. Time is working for us. 40 years ago, we are promised and we declare, regardless of the state and the condition of the nation, we are still able, we are more than able to take the land to take the mountain. We want the mountains, not just the valleys. We want the mountains, not just the valley. For we are the company of them, of John. Yes, in the name of Jesus, the voice of one cry. In the wilderness, we prepare the way of the Lord. We make straight his path. We said the mountains have been made plain. The valleys have been filled. The crooked path have been strengthened. For the glory of Yahweh. For the glory of Yahweh. For the glory of his kingdom. This is the day let your sound hallelujah resound in the earth let your sound resound in the 
the earth. Do not hold back. Do not hold back. Release a sound upon the nations. Release a sound upon the firmament. Release a sound upon the land, upon the waters. Release the sound of heaven. Let his word go far. Let his mind be established. Let his will this morning become your meat. My meat is the will of him who sent me and to finish it. Zalavayanda Rabdoboha. Oh, hallelujah. My ways are not your ways. My thoughts are not your thoughts, hear the Lord. Father, we align with your ways. We align with your thoughts. We align with your lordship, with your sovereignty. We say once again, the kingdoms of this world are becoming, they are becoming the kingdom of our God, the kingdom of the UN, the kingdom, yes, of United States, the kingdom of Bahrain, the kingdom of Saudi Arabia, the kingdom of India, the kingdom of China, Japan, yes, Lord, the kingdom of the Philippines, the kingdom, oh God, man that above Russia, in the name of Jesus, the kingdom, oh God, of the continent of Africa, the kingdom of Nigeria, the kingdom of South Africa, Zilembra no Moshianta, the kingdom of Eswatini, Mariba Kateyando, the kingdom, man that above of Norway, in the name of Jesus, they are becoming the kingdom of our God. We establish the reign of Christ we establish the reign of Christ we establish the reign of Christ rule thou in the midst of thy enemy come Lord you and the ark of your might come take your place citadel over this realm the kingdom of the minds of men the kingdom of the minds of men we cast down thrones and imagination and every high thing that exalt themselves upon the minds of men in Congo Brazzaville in Congo Kishasha in the name of Jesus we bring them down we bring down false altar false mindset false belief system in the name of Jesus the false identity that have continued to cripple the minds of men in South Africa. We cast them down. We say, awake, O church of South Africa. Awake, O saints in South Africa. Come into alignment with the will of God. In the name of Jesus, we bring the order. We bring the structure. We bring the government of Christ. Let it reign over Pretoria. Let it rain in the name of Jesus over Western Cape. Let it rain in the name of Jesus over Blue Fountain. These are the seats of power. We establish the reign of Christ. We establish the mind of Christ in Asarok in Nigeria, in White House, yes, in America. We decree and we declare that this is a new day. We sound the alarm. The alarm bell is ringing. Hear he, hear he, hear he the sound of God. Hear he the voice of the Lord. You who sleep, awake, 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 put on strength. It's a new day, a new wine skin we proclaim upon your household. A new wine skin we proclaim upon your mind. A new wine skin we proclaim upon your children. A new wine skin we declare, yes, within your estate. We declare this day. It's a new day, a new wine skin. We are getting ready to receive the outpouring of the new wine. Hallelujah. Glory and praise to you, Lamb of God. Friends, this is the Potter's Gate. This is what we do. This is what we believe. This is God's desire for us. We are the voice of one crying in the wilderness. In the wilderness, yes, of, you know, of the high streets. In the wilderness of the CBDs. In the wilderness of New York. In the wilderness, come on, of Santin City. In the wilderness, yes, of Lagos and all this, you know, wonderful, beautiful commercialized area. Their wilderness, we declare Christ you reign. In the wilderness of Shanghai, in the name of Jesus, we declare you reign. You, you reign, Jesus. In the wilderness of Maputo. In, in, in Mozambique we declare your lordship hallelujah we declare your kingdom yes the kingdoms of this world become the kingdom of our God and of his Christ hallelujah in the midst of the crisis of, of the nations we rise up we give clarity and direction let Christ be glorified in the wilderness 
of Israel will proclaim and will declare Christ is seen. The visibility of Christ in the midst of a strong religious society. Christ will declare you reign. In Gaza you reign. In all the region they call Palestine, you reign there. You reign, Jesus. Oh, come on. We give glory to the Lord. We give glory to the Lord. Shout unto the Lord with the voice of triumph. We triumph this day. Oh, hallelujah. Come on, friends. We bless the name of the Lord. Amen. Well, I'm done this morning. What a way to end. What a way to end. This is how we pray. The things of God must be back with a strong spirit of intercession. It's doctrine. It's fire. Both must work concurrent. Hallelujah. It's sound doctrine. It's sound spiritual input. We must continually say to us the heartbeat of the Father. Amen. They said this cannot be dealt with except by prayer and fasting. We pray and fast and see to the establishment of the will of God. We decree it. We declare it. Can you feel the burdens lifted? Can you feel the weight gone? <laughs> yes. That's what priests are called to do. We stand on behalf of the atmosphere of the realms we've been positioned. We lift our hands and we declare shift. Doesn't have to take everybody. Just need those who have the sight, the understanding. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. Thank you, Lord, that you empower every servant of yours out there. We ask for grace this morning. Strengthen them wherever they are. Wherever they've been located. Lord, breathe into them. Breathe upon that heart, mind, and soul again. Send help to them. Many of us can do with help in this season. We do need help. Send help. As Paul said, he needs help. We send help to them. Grace, we thank you. We honor you for that which you have done and what you will continue to do through these hands, through these vessels that are available to the glory of your name. We bless you, O oh Father. The nations are coming. The kingdoms are coming. And they are bringing, O oh God, yes, their bounties and their crowns. They will cast it before you and declare, Christ, you reign. Indeed, you reign. Hallelujah. Thank you so very much, everyone, this morning. Uh, if you've joined us in this time of prayer, in this time of intercession, and of course, in <clears throat> this time of really bringing clarity and direction to what the Spirit of God is saying to us regarding, amen, recasting, amen, the heavenly vision. When we talk about vision, please note, this is not just something you pick up somewhere to do. Amen. This is not something somebody give to you uh, because you walk in the church and somebody say, "Wow, your vision is called to to go and pastor that church." That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about what heaven has impregnated you with, that continue to speak until the, until the day of His appearance. Amen. God bless you. We'll see you again, hopefully tomorrow, if the Lord, Amen, tarries. God bless you. We'll see you again. Enjoy the rest of your day, friends. Bye bye.